Hey, welcome to Dr. G Engaging Minds. I'm Dr. Howard Gluss, and my first guest is Wes Gear. Wes is the former touring guitarist for Korn and the founder of Rock to Recovery. Hey, Wes, it's great to see you. Great to be seen, great to be here. You know, I was wondering, you know, how you're doing with all this uh, social isolation, with the quarantine, how you're coping with it all. I'm doing surprisingly well. I mean, I work out of my home mostly, so I'm kind of used to it. But um, luckily, there's been a lot of uh, wonderful, uh, you know, resources digitally, the way to connect, you know, like Zoom and stuff like that. It's not the same, but it's been working really well. And I've just been having to take extra effort to make sure I'm reaching out to other people and getting that. Even if it's face to face like this, I'm getting something. Exactly. It's kind of what we have. And that's what I, I feel like you deal with the reality of what you have. And this is pretty good when you think about it. If you think about what some of the alternatives could have been like, that if we wouldn't have had this technology, how really isolated we would feel. Yeah. Every how time we leave the house now, we get excited. Like, I got to get gas today. Whoa. <laughs> I know. I live near the farmer's market at the Grove, and the day I go out shopping at the farmer's market, it's like the most, I'll call and go, oh my God, they had orange juice. I'm so excited. Yeah, a lot of gratitude now. Mm. You know, a lot of patients right now, one of the issues they're facing is some of them have been relapsing, and I feel it's because of the isolation. And in some ways, I feel like it's a bit of an excuse, to be honest, because as you know, there's so many things people can do to stay connected. So I'm wondering what your experience is around that. Yeah. So um, for me, I just have this old mantra that was burned into my head. And it's more program, more program, more program, which is, uh, you know, your program can be anything. I'm a 12 stepper, but there's smart recovery and all sorts of different ways. But whatever you're doing as a program of a recovery, I know that in these especially challenging times, that I have to do more of it. So, you know, I add, I add more exercise. I'm adding more walks outside. I'm adding more time. Now I FaceTime people all the time. In the old days, <laughs> if you FaceTime somebody without warning them, they get yeah, kind they of get mad. All nervous. They go like, yeah, wait, like, wait, wait, wait. I don't have my makeup on. I'm not put together. Yeah. And now there's a relaxation around it. No one seems to care that much. It's kind of like doing the drive. You know, if you just walk, uh, showed up at somebody's house and knocked on the door that we used to do that in the 80s and the 90s, and it was okay. Yeah, remember kind of, back then? <laughs> yeah. We so, with our shoulder pads at the door and the people were okay about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, that's what I've been doing. No, I think that's great. And what you're saying is that we're connecting more. We're finding a way to increase that attachment, which is so important, especially for people struggling with addiction. They feel isolated, mm -hmm. and that's the first place they go. And what you're saying is, you know, get attached, no matter what the program is, no matter what you're doing, get attached to yourself, your sense of self, but also get attached to others. And one of the ways you do it in a great way is around music. How do you think music helps people increase that attachment? You know, music is just the energy changer, you know, and every emotion we talk about is an energy on some level, uh, you know, anger or serenity or happiness. And so when we can add music, we can instantly change our whole vibrational level. We can change our focus. We can put on a song that uplifts our spirits. Maybe it's some song you loved when you're on vacation in Tahiti. Maybe it's a song that brings back a great memory. But also in the Rock to Recovery, you use some music therapy. I wonder if you could share that with our audience. Right. So Rock to Recovery is getting non-musicians together to write and play music together. We give everybody, you know, we meet them where they're at with their own ability level. And, and you know, most songs are just a few cool notes put together with some vocals and lyrics. So we find a topic that's near and dear to our heart. We can get some true emotions out. We create as a group. And, uh, you know, because that's what really music is. It's, it's our emotions put to music, you know. Music uh, that's is storytelling. It's a yeah. powerful way to tell a story. And right now, collectively, we're all going through this powerful change. And to be able to put that to words is so important and so therapeutic. Because let me ask you this question. One of the things I've been pondering is people are talking about this concept of new normal. What's our new normal psychologically, spiritually? 
what will impact enough us enough during this period that may make some powerful changes? Yeah, it's tough because uh, it's it's hypo- you know it's hypothetical, of course. And I think in any scenario, there's going to be the light side and the dark side. Um, and then I was looking at the way we do digital connection, which has now pushed a lot of the work we do with music therapy. We're now doing it in other states because everything's remote anyhow. So we're now going deeper in the digital realm and getting a broader base to connect to and new innovative ways. So you could argue, do we need to live more in the digital realm? (laughs) So there's kind of a yin and a yang to it. I think on a lot of ways, people will be empowered to know what they can do in their own self-reliant fashion. And then I think in another way that that can be kind of dangerous too, you know? Yeah, but I I think what it does do is it brings up a sense of exploration and a sense of new dialogue is created. A friend of mine who is a diehard AA person, been in it for 30 years, is having, was at one point having a lot of problems with all the meetings being online. And he kept saying, you know, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And after a while, we talked about it. And then he said, but you know, I'm talking to people in other countries. I'm starting to have a different experience. So that's what I'm saying. There's always the yin and yang of it. I agree with you completely. And one of the things I've said this before, and I say it all the time when I'm working with patients, is I say, you know what? Instead of thinking this as self-isolation, what about if we think about this as a time of self-reflection? Well, you know, it really comes down to spirituality always. And the rule of thumb in spirituality is when something's taken away, when I'm in pain, when I feel lost, what's the opportunity here? What's the lesson? So we really have a choice in any challenging situation to go in self-pity and focus on everything we don't have or go, what can come out of this that's really good? But it's important to tell the people struggling. I'm not always happy all the time. The only I'm reason not I'm either. here, yeah, the only reason I'm here, because sometimes I think is that that's good for you. You're all happy. I hate my, listen, it's because I've had suicidal ideation. I've wanted to die. I've suffered mental health. I've had addiction issues. It gets really dark. This is the stuff that helps me battle the darkness and it comes for me too. And it comes from this connection. You know, one of the jokes I say to patients all the time is, you know, I wasn't always the poster child for mental health. And I'll just sort of leave it at that. Everybody struggles, including psychologists have had to struggle. So the thought that anyone has it easy is just not necessarily true. It is not true. Uh, If people wanted to find out more about Rock to Recovery, how could they do so? We're easy to find. We're all over the interweb. It's Rock, T-O, spelt out to recovery. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, a website that's really cool. Um, and then I, you can find me. I'm Wes Gear, W E S G E E R. And uh, if you DM me, if you have any, I love to help people out who are struggling. Um, so yeah, we're easy to find. But we're not done with Wes Gear just yet. He rejoins Dr. Kluss later in the show to play a little guitar. I feel happy when I procrastinate. Yeah. But first, that's what really brings that higher level of recovery. More on the life saving power of music. A lot of people ask me, Dr. G, how can I get sober right now? And I tell them there's a lot of paths towards sobriety. And one person who has a unique path is my next guest, Dr. Constance Sharp. She's with Rock to Recovery, and I want to welcome her to the show. Constance, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me. And it's been a pleasure to have Wes Gear on the show and all of you with Rock to Recovery. You're in a group of amazing people. Thank you. So Constance, like I just said, you have a unique story to tell and I want you to share it with our audience as far as how you got into sobriety and recovery. So yeah, I've been sober for uh, more than two decades. And uh, in my early early recovery, I had problems. I was suicidal and and I saw individuals coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan Mm -hmm. who also were having trouble with their sobriety. And I changed everything that I was doing in graduate school. I was at graduate school at the time. And I wanted to find out what are the complementary therapies that we can use to really shoot our recovery into another level. And that's, that's what I do now. So is that what you do with music right now in Rock to Recovery as an alternative form of therapy? 
it's a complementary form of therapy. So we work, it's a better term. Thank you. Yeah, we work with other uh, other therapies. Rock to Recovery is an adjunct. We work in more than a hundred facilities, providing more than five hundred sessions each month um, through several states. And so what we've learned is that music works synergistically with other activities that an individual is doing. And that's what really brings that higher level of recovery. You know what I love about music as therapy and my experience in working with you guys is that when you teach people how to express themselves through song and through music, and I wanna make this clear to our audience, you do not have to be a professional musician no. or singer to be part of this. What it does is it gives people a sense of uh, self, they're a lot, they tend to explore their selves, mm -hmm. and then they get to express themselves in a very unique way. And for a lot of people struggling with sobriety, self-expression is a difficult thing for them. And also, like you said, it brings your whole consciousness to another level. Yeah, so I first encountered Rock to Recovery. I was working at a treatment center in Malibu, and uh, I was invited to see a session. And I was so impressed because I did not believe that individuals in detox who were very, very ill, who were not musicians, could write and record a song in an hour. And not only did they write and record a song that, in an hour that was pretty good, but they were so proud of it the next day. And they were sharing it amongst the different groups that within a year I was working for Rock to Recovery. It, it's that special. For a lot of people dealing with recovery, there's a strong sense of shame. They're oh, yeah. not happy about where their lives is. There's a lot of embarrassment, shame, et cetera. So having a piece of music that you could believe in and be able to have something concrete that you could show to people can be such a powerful, powerful tool in recovery. Well, it is because one of the parts of our songwriting process is we want people to express whatever darkness they have, right? And we do that in the verses. So we've had veterans who have talked about suicidal ideation and, and addicts who've talked about their hopelessness and, and people who have been victimized in some way talk about their shame. But what we try to do most of the time is in the chorus, which is the money part of the song, right? That's the part that you leave singing. We try to leave, we try to leave them with something hopeful. So you get to, on the one hand, express whatever the difficulty is, but then leave singing something that's going to brighten and uplift you as time goes on. I know, Constance, you're so proud of your organization being a nonprofit organization. I wonder if you could share a little bit more of the background with our audience. Yeah, so uh, Rock to Recovery was founded on December 12th of 2012 by Wes Gear, who is a former touring guitarist with the iconic band Korn. And uh, we go into addiction treat, well, we, all the guys are musicians. I'm I'm the doctor, but we go into addiction treatment. We're all treat doctors at one point in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> we go into addiction treatment facilities, mental health facilities, veterans organizations, youth organizations, drug courts, wherever there's a need, uh, corporations if they want us, uh, and write and record songs. And uh, we do this with more than a hundred facilities. We provide 500 sessions a month. Work with about 2,500 people each month. And we have a contract with the Department of Defense to work with the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program and now with the Navy. So if people who were dealing with recovery or in sobriety wanted to find out more about your work at Rock to Recovery, how could they do so? We're on all the socials, so you can just look up Rock to Recovery, that's T-O, not the number, or find us on the web at rocktorecovery.org. What I love about your organization, you're such a wonderful group of people. And when you all get together, it's so powerful and authentic that the power of group and the power of attachment is fundamental for people who are looking to recover. So with that, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for having me. Still ahead, Dr. Gluss gets a guitar lesson with one of the greats. You be uh, a shrink for the day, and I'll be a uh, darkness. Okay, yes, I will. Tell me about your father. <laughs> so, tell me about your mother. All right, 
So we're gonna do some simple guitar. Okay. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna write a song and take some cognitive examples. I know you you like that word cognitive. Oh, yes, it's very psychological. <laughs> yeah. And what we're gonna do is talk about some affirmations that we can write about things that make us feel good. As you know, putting our cognitive attention towards what we like is beneficial. But we're not only gonna just do that and write it, which takes it to the next level, not just saying it, saying it, writing it, but we're gonna also attach it to some music. So right. that really gets us engaged. And when we get like kind of the joy of the music, it's just a deeper experience, a deeper cognitive experience. <laughs> It will. Okay, you got your your honorary psychology degree. Yeah, yeah. It's the only word I know. Um, So, you know, music and many of the best songs in the world are very simple. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, right? It's just, of course, I screwed that up. But uh, I'm only I'm only a couple sips into my coffee. By the way, you're forgiven. Yeah, yeah. Wait, here we go. What does it say? Oh, it's backwards. I I know. Know. It's a, as a silent scream for coffee. I think, I like that. I think it's true. <laughs> I think it's true. So, so we're going to use just two simple notes today for the simplicity of our hit we're about to write here because we're a band now. Yes, we are. And you're you helping me. You can be Simon and I'll be Garfunkel. There you go. I had some other ideas too, but we'll stick with that. And you're going to help me find my voice in music, right? Yes, it'll help you find your voice in music, yeah. All right, so the first note you're going to hit is on what's called the fifth fret. It's the second dot. We're just going to use the lowest string. When I say low, I don't mean close to the floor. I mean low to pitch, which is actually closest to your face. So fifth fret, just give me, yeah, that looks right. Just give me one hit there. Okay, now I do want to qualify. I've never played guitar before, so here we go. That's great tone. I okay. mean, for now, so we see it can strike the notes. Now, does Dr. G have any rhythm whatsoever? I, I see a second career coming here. <laughs> Me too. Me too. All right, so check it out. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, hit. Okay, this, now let's try to do it together in time. One, two, three, four. How come you're going one beat behind me? Oh, no. Yeah, you have to move between the notes. Okay. Are you stressed out? <laughs> no, not yet. I'm getting there. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, you know, when we first did our first rock recovery sessions, I had some clients freak out because the pressure in everybody's look and they're learning. I was like, oh, no, I'm stressing the clients out. And it's like, wait, that's great. They've got to learn to deal with yeah, I'm breathing, I'm trying to stay in the moment. Yeah, you know, reminding myself this is my first time, all that stuff. Here's the idea of the exercise to get in some lyrics. We're gonna write some stuff, okay? Yeah, better get a drink of water. We're working your heart over here. I know, I know, I know, and it is water. <laughs> okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write four things that you, this is your creative writing exercise. Okay. You feel happy when I, what? Okay, so four if things I'm happy with? Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm gonna try to give you, I want it to be in four syllables to add a little bit of cadence and rhythm and a challenge to you. So for example, I feel happy when I, Take out the trash. Take out the trash. Wait, take out the trash. Okay? Or go to the beach. I eat pie. When I eat pie. When I eat pie? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Okay, perfect. Four souls when I, I feel um, happy when, when I eat pie. Um, sit on the beach. Yeah. Um, procrastinate. Okay. Okay. When I eat pie, sit on the beach, procrastinate. And then one more. Um, does it have to make sense? Nope. That's where it's really art. Whenever it doesn't make sense, 
or whenever it's when the moon <laughs> sings. Okay, when the moon sings. Great. Okay, so. Let so, me get one. I eat pie. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's true, though. I, well, I know I have a giant sweet tooth myself. As a former alcoholic, I crave sugar at night. It's just kind of how it goes. And I sit on the beach, procrastinate when the moon sings. I love it. Okay, and the song could be called one. It's the very moon. poetic at the end. The Joni Mitchell. <laughs> exactly. And I love the flavor and the passion you're bringing to it. Well, it's like quite southern roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel it. I feel it. So now that, since you're going to hit a note once in a while, yours could be like. Yeah, and you can even get funky with it. I want to. Funky beat, Dr. G. Okay. So it's going to start a little bit with me just on the guitar, and you can play along with me, and then I'll give you a little cue when the vocals start. Here we go. Okay. Wait. One, two, three, four. Yeah. 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 Now, you ready? I feel happy when I... I eat pie. I feel happy when I sit on the beach. I feel happy when I procrastinate. I feel happy when I the moon sings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. up? <laughs> Woo! Get it, Tom. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, Wes. Yeah. Hey, catch us out on check us out on our MySpace page. Yes, and that's West Gear with Rock to Recovery. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, my man. Next time on Dr. G Engaging Minds, actor Eric Roberts. It's a great time to explore or re-explore your whole situation. I want to thank Wes Gear and all the wonderful people at Rock to Recovery for their insights into recovery. For more Dr. G Engaging Minds, check out our website and social media. Yeah.